I'd like to talk to you about Skyline Game Engine. It's a development uh, platform which is in beta testing at the moment and it strives to be one of the better ones out there. I've had it for about a year now and it's uh, it's coming on leaps and bounds. It's, it, it, is, it is quite good in my uh, general opinion. So uh, <clears throat> let's get started. You can download the free version of it which is uh, fully featured, it just has restrictions on you, the games and what you can actually sell and things like that. Um, but if you do decide to purchase it for £40 for the indie license, you do get two seats, so you can use it on two different computers. It is OSVR integrated, fully integrated at the moment. Uh, it, the development platform runs from, from, the, from the org software. It's got NVIDIA physics, uh, it's got QT plugins, so you can write your own plugins uh, and use them within your games. At the moment, uh, RackNet hasn't been open to us, but they have had peer-to-peer uh, -peer game in there working with, with the um, platform. Uh, once they've got server and client working, then they will, uh, they will, they will give it to us. Up. Now these uh, two pictures in the background here you see are actually from within the game engine. So they're pretty good. Very nice little pictures. So we'll go over to the feature list. Uh, from here on the Trello board you can see that there's quite a few different platforms that they are going to support. They already support VR and Windows. They will be supporting Steam Workshop because uh, Skyline will be sold on Steam and the API will be actually open to Skyline users. Yeah, its main features are uh, Skyline Generation 2, which is about to drop for us uh, to best test uh, any day now. It's got a QT editor, so you can make your own plugins and uh, control them through Lua, which is uh, pretty good. So let's take for instance, that you've got, you're making a forest and your game is about uh, gathering resources and things like that, chopping down trees. So with the plugin, you can assign it to drop so many meshes and it's to have things attached to it, like a, a health, the, uh, the tree falling over uh, animation and disappearing, bringing up uh, a group of logs or something what you can pick up as a player um, but you can actually write something like that a plugin to actually do that for you and access it through lower uh, nav mesh is already in there uh, so your um, NPCs and things like that know where they can walk can't walk things like that uh, through the AI scripting that you that you write for your uh, for your entities. Networking is going to be via RackNet. Uh, it's going to be actually included in the engine and uh, it's going to be open for us to use. So it's going to be real nice and easy. Uh, you access it through Lua commands or C Sharp which they're introducing later on. Um, yeah, so it's, it's going to be an all-in-one solution for that. Uh, they've already got 64-bit version there. Introducing uh, the decal system and occlusion culling. Um, an important one for groups of developers or a company is that they're going to do cloud based multi user development. So, if you're an indie, indie group with uh, staff in different countries, then you can actually share your files and, and your levels and things. They're going to be uh, opening up C Sharp for us to. To use, so we can use it with uh, with the lower system for scripting. We'll be uh, finishing off the post effects, so God rays, HD, uh, HD effects, things like that. Uh, they're going to be having that actually as an editor within the editor, if you like. Uh, light mapping, smart body animations, voxel primitives, auto log system to reduce your poly counts. You're going to be also opening up C++ SDKs, so you can write your own custom editors, uh, 
integration softwares, and you can write it all yourself, which is another thing which you don't usually see in game engines these days. Uh, the improved resource collection is basically you've got a general asset library where you keep all all your general say I don't know like parts of rubbish models uh, you might have door models and stuff what you use in a variety of projects and then you've got the project which is uh, it has its own assets library which is for a particular game uh, now when it was it collects the resources from the general library and brings them into the yeah, project library so that when you're compiling your game, the end game, that lot, it isn't getting bulked up with assets that you're not using. They're going to uh, have multi threading in there, which isn't in there at the moment, and a cinematics editor. Uh, I'll touch a little bit more on this a bit later with the spawn pass. Uh, the main editor uh, ability to hard add delete meshes a uh, sub message from a full mesh uh, that will also come with the terrain editor where you can cut holes in the terrain to create caves and things like that multi select is already in there so you can multi select some uh, some some models on your scene rotate them all together scale them all together things like that that's already in there Seen entity list, uh, that's already in there, but it doesn't have the uh, right click context menu at the moment. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep, we'll go on to the script editor. Now, this is having a lot of work done to it, um, or has been in the past, and it's pretty good. Uh, the only thing it hasn't got at the moment is this syntax auto completion, which uh, is supposed to be getting added uh, quite soon. Uh, it's a fully featured editor, script editor, and it does come with API uh, menus and that lot, so you can you can pick like your um, like a vehicle setup, and it'll just automatically populate your your script with like wheels, hand, handbrake, frictions, things like that. And you got your lower libraries, which has your your bones in there for your skeletal system. Networking's coming through through via where is it? Oh, what, RackNet. You've got your nav mesh controls via uh, lower the lower libraries, environmental, which is uh, your ocean height fog. You've got oh god, volumetric clouds, things like that. Dynamic dynamic date and time. What are you You've got post effects, which will be uh, accessible through the lower shadow controls, effects uh, two, three, and fours, meshes, manual mesh. You've got a mesh editor in there, which you can do your level of detail already, um, scale your mesh, edit your mesh, things like that through there. It's your own system. Uh, they're going to have a river editor, which is, I think is pretty good, so you can uh, design your rivers in there before you actually uh, attach them to your terrain. Uh, improved road, edit road and path editor with level of details, terrain paging, which is, which is very good. Uh, same as what you get on UE4 and that. Sublime path painting, which is good. Uh, yeah, they're getting quite a lot in there. Vegetation system, there's quite a bit of work to do on the vegetation system, I believe. Whereas um, tree physics isn't in there at the moment, you know, so you have to put your own physics around there on each tree at the moment, but it's getting there very soon. Well, what have we got now? Uh, da, 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 da. The environment system, I'll touch on that in a later video. Um, the direct rendering is DirectX 11. At the moment, it is DirectX 9. DirectX 11 is coming with the Generation 2 build, which is getting dropped to us um, beta testers before it hits the uh, normal pipeline. Uh, so that's any day now. Uh, visual shader editor, so you can make your own shaders, things like that. Post effects shader. Just to work on ATI cards, parallax 
displacement mapping, fully de uh, deferred rendering, mobile shadows, OpenGL, tessellation. You know, th these are a lot of things what will come in into the re rendering system, which you don't get the options for on normal in the um, game development platforms. You've got your 2D system for your sprites and uh, 2D games, material editor, there's a, uh, it's, it's quite functional as it is at the moment. Uh, these are a few little things what they're, what they need to do to it, but it's, uh, it's still very functional at the moment. And I don't know what's coming with generation two in the next few days. Thing to note on there is that they are going to bring out a normal map texture generator. So if your model, if you've got a model, it doesn't come with a normal map, then you can generate a normal map there when that gets introduced into the materials editor. Now the game editors, there's a lot of editors in the development program as it spans, but they are actually going to add even more to make it easier to access uh, like weapons and cars and you know the, the different parts of uh, parts of the car or things like that through Lua scripts and they're just making it a lot easier than what it already is at the moment. Uh, if you're an artist and you're not really much of a coder, they've actually got a game mechanic editor in there, which is a lot like UE4s, and um, it's fully featured. And I'll show that to you on another video. They're bringing out a vehicle editor, so you can put your wheels on your vehicles within the editor and reference it in your in your Lua and uh, in the Lua editor and that lot. Uh, a lot easier. Constraints editor, so you can have rope, bridges, cogs, things like that in there. Now this is a really interesting one for me. Is the database editor? It's um, you can use it for inventory and shops, refer to the database through uh, MySQL or whatever they're going to use, and that's going to inject the database into the development platform for you. So you can re refer to the database and it's going to speed up the, uh, the actual game itself in no end because everything's going to be loaded into the database and you're not accessing files all the time. Uh, it will be good for things like uh, your NPC your enemies, like uh, you've got your basic bombs with so much armor, so much fighting strength, things like that, to your level bosses, which you, you, know, you can be able to load all the attributes from the database, which is another good thing. You have a level generator, which I'm not too sure what that's going to entail, uh, character editor, so you can edit your uh, your character uh, bipeds and things. Are right. I, I think that is quest editor. Now there's something already like this. What one of the users has uh, already created, um, actually on the asset store and in the forum. And what it is is a speech. It's a, a speech. Uh, it's like say spreadsheet, but you can attach to your characters. So you're playing your game. You go to talk to them, and they'll have a spreadsheet of all, of all the replies they can give to you and you can access that uh, this this quest editor thing you can access that through lua which is it's just making life so much easier uh, and that is very much like the dialogue editor you know the when you're speaking through npcs things like that now the mesh uh, scatter mesh editor is a qt plugin you're, you can write your own plugins for, uh, for the game, um, and that's all that's all free for you. This you know the QT environment, which is accessed by uh, by Lua, uh, and will be uh, via uh, C Sharp. So yeah, you got the GUI editor. Uh, this is where you make your user inf interfaces and your HUDs. It works on HTML which is very easy script to write and, and learn. And uh, with it being HTML, it's very fast at loading in, and very fast. You can access uh, that through lower as well. And then we have phys physics updates, uh, physics three upgrade, fasciation physics, ragdoll physics, soft body physics, constraints, 
uh, and rigid bodies constraints set up and stuff like that now for me this fine path uh, editor is complete it is complete you can have your ai follow a specific path you can do cut scenes attach a camera to 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 a spline path um once it finishes one spline you can have it change camera to another one so that'll start running you know say your cameras Say, for instance, uh, it's a cutscene, you've got a camera going over your terrain and then it, it goes to a, a village or something and then it cuts to another camera on a spline, spline path which is, you fo might focus in on a, on a guy walking and talking and stuff like that for a set amount of time then it might go to a player to actually playing the game. It's good for things like that, it's good for uh, creating password, your AI uh, walk around, things like that. It, it's it's fully functional. It's there and it, it's easy to use, which is the main thing. Uh, they're introducing a lot of import and exports for it. Things like uh, you can already import FBX files, async files, <laughs> and now they've got planned so you can export to SketchUp, uh, Blender, other um, software, 3ds Max and Maya. Um, they're also going to be uh, importing Blender game logic and the scenes, which makes it a lot easier for uh, a lot of people what use Blender out there. And then you've got your your general things like website improvement, documentation, which I'm on at the moment with the devs, uh, tutorials, video tutorials. Now Tati was a user. He um, <coughs> he's produced some really good video tutorials. If you uh, if you head towards them, that will get you started in Skyline. Uh, the website and the forums are due for a uh, for a revamp, and I think that'll be coming in the coming months. So yeah, that's uh, that's just some of the features that Skyline Skyline offers. Now, the good thing about this development team is that if you really want something in the engine, and it isn't listed here. And they are open to suggestions. Uh, and if there's enough call for it to be added, or if it's just generally a very good idea to have that in, because it's going to make people's lives easier, then uh, they might add it to the list. So that that is a good thing about them. They are very very friendly, approachable dev team. Right, thank you for your time.